Hey, Jay Bone Nation. Shaming of Jay. He's not a dopey dumb bitch. He gets late. What's up, guys? Good morning. Little little pivoting, little pivoting. Um, just found out a little while ago that uh, Chad Daybell, the hearing will not be streamed today. And I think it's because, um, you know, they had the 50 people or like 57. I don't know what the number is, but if, um, you know, they're all like in the courtroom, probably waiting, sitting in the gallery, they don't want to show them on camera, right? That's my guess. So I guess I'm I'm thinking today we'll find out um, if there will be, you know, the trial start tomorrow or Wednesday. Dizzy says 57. Um, so right now we have Shayna Gardner's appearance. I have set up. So let me pull that up here. Squadushal. Um, so, yeah. Thanks for being here, everyone. And tomorrow is Jennifer Crumbly's um, sentencing, so we'll definitely watch that. I could throw this up here. It's like a douchel. morning everyone thanks for being here oh yeah i think it is james right isn't it james don't they um aren't they sentencing them both both at the same time thanks for being here everybody good morning good morning good morning sorry i'm a little um yes both all right i know bob's not been around but i'll text him today and see if he wants to to dual stream that since we watched the trial together. Um, it's tomorrow, guys. It's tomorrow. I was wrong. It's tomorrow, folks. I had the wrong date. So we'll definitely do that tomorrow. Can you get a quick... Pri I mean, defense attorney Meow, if you are familiar with the... Um, Adelson case, the parallels to Dan Markell and this case are, are, are striking. Uh, you know, a, a contentious divorce, their their divorce proceedings are like over 800 pages or something like that. They are with new people where when Shana Gardner's, all this is alleged, right, mm -hmm. allegedly, Shana Gardner's new husband, um, Mario, hires a hitman, well, his tenant, to shoot and kill her ex-husband, uh, Jared Bridegan. And he, they're like, it's, they, even, but the difference is they did, the kids were in the car. Oh, one of his daughters was in the car and saw it happen. And you're on all way Miss Gardner's appearance this morning. Okay, right, thank you. All right, um, I'm assuming that you both got the order that I entered. Yes, sir. Okay, so since I'm taking um, the review back, what I'd like to know is I'm not sure what got provided to Judge Foster um, on behalf of the defense, and I'm going to address uh, Fernandez separately. 
differently um, because I believe that there are separate issues related to both. Okay, so um, Mr. Dryshutter, do you want me to get the materials from Judge Foster or do you want to provide me something different? I am perfectly okay with everything we gave Judge Foster you were here. Okay. Um, with the understanding, I think everyone, but I just like to put sort of that it, in no way are we waiving the attorney client privilege by allowing you to review it. You know, there could be some argument made that, well, if they said they're perfectly fine with you reviewing it, then it's broken. That, it's with the understanding that we're making some exception for court review, right? It was more clear with Judge Foster, but um, having said that, yes, everything that Judge Foster has. Um, is unredacted, the state has it in a redacted format, and I believe it was filed in a redacted format. Uh, I'll double check that, it was supposed to be filed. Um, if it hasn't been, we'll make sure that gets done so that there's some record as to like dates and times so whatever your ruling is would be reflected um, on a, a court docket. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, to the extent, let me, so there are two documents that the state has. Again, just going to pause this real quick and just welcome everyone in. Thanks for being here. Again, Chad Daybell's appearance will, the jury selection will not be streamed today, will not be available for streaming for anyone. Um, so watching this right now, it's the Shana Gardner and Mario Fernandez appearance. Um, thank you all for being here, and let me continue. Um, that are both titled confidential communication, correct? Confidential communication, confidential timeline. Okay. And they're attached to the emails back and forth between my client and our office. Just and you have 66 emails, correct? Well, let me kind of just go a little slower. They're the attachments. And then there are emails that r discuss the attachment, which will be enlightening for the court to understand okay. how they came to be and why they came to be and what they serve some purpose for. They're attached to the, um, where you can see the attachments, and then of course we attach the attachments in a physical copy. That's one portion. That's what we initially delivered to Judge Foster. Then there is 60 some odd miscellaneous emails, which I believe all of them are titled in the subject line, confidential communication. And there are a variety of subjects over a, a many months, if not over a, a year period of time. And the only, and I'll say that, and then whether or not, and, and our position is, and I think the state would at least acknowledge they had access to all of those, they just maintain that they've never seen them. Okay. Docket line 163, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Do you think that there is any need for me to look at these, I, I will say category B, these 60 miscellaneous emails, if the state of Florida is saying that they did not, well, they had access to it on view. Do you think there's a need for me to look at those? I think, yes, to understand the, the case law as to whether or not you may determine to disqualify the office versus individual lawyers within the office, um, I think you have to understand that those emails all were able to be accessed via not only next point by Lindsay Butler and various other law enforcement. Uh, no, to the question is Jose. Jose's not there and Shana's not there either. It's just Mario. Uh, he might be on Zoom, I guess. You have to at least look at them to understand that. Whether you have to read them, like the the body of them, I, I don't I don't know that you do, right? But you just have to understand that they exist and then understand that if, if the evidence were to show that they did have access to them, I think you are going to have to consider that in your evaluation. All right. 
And this was all provided to Judge Foster? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And there's nothing that needs to be supplemented from the defense perspective? No, no ma'am. All right. Does the state agree? Yes, the, other than the one document entitled Confidential Conversations. And the other one entitled, entitled Confidential Timeline. Other than that, yes. Okay. All right, um, let me address Barger now. I believe that my understanding at the last hearing was that you did not want me to reach the substance of the communications. And my understanding from your pleadings is that um, there were, I guess, um, these devices where search warrants were served, and then um, it was divided out amongst uh, detectives to review the search warrant results. And you were still, I guess, gathering or figuring out what was actually in these terabytes of the Google, whatever that was, and in the iCloud. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So our motion uh, rests more on the substantial misconduct prong as opposed um, to the other prong, with, which required a showing of prejudice. The misconduct prong does not. Um, but we do not have any objection. Uh, to the court reviewing what we provided um, Judge Foster to date and uh, what did you provide? Yes, Your Honor. I, we provided um, several uh, recordings that were, one was a phone call, there were a couple of voicemails um, and then some emails and text messages. It was not substantial, Judge, um, okay. but we do believe it's important that the, that the court review those just to be able to make the conclusion that there were in fact attorney client communications on these devices. Okay. Is there anything um, in addition that the state wants me to consider related to the Garner case? If I'm understanding Mr. Cody's allegations at this point, I think last court day we conceded the state did not receive any of these communications, but there was some mishandling of them because a warrant was procured for her iPod return after the device were sent to the location. So I think the warrant and warrant affidavit for the iCloud would be relevant if Mr. Cody doesn't object. I'll provide that to the court. And we intend to provide that and other documents to the court. I didn't. I, I never said the state didn't review um, everything. They did, in fact. We know that the state did, in fact, or prosecution did, in fact, review communications between the attorney-client that were covered by the attorney-client privilege because the agent or analyst reviewing them reached out to Miss Stifler saying, "Hey, I think I'm reviewing attorney-client communications." So. Oh my God, Stifler's mom. When are they going to start talking about the Taint Team? I forgot about. Remember last time they talked about Stifler's Mrs. Stifler and the Taint Team. We know that the state, right, their whole team did in fact review attorney-client communications. So that's not what we're saying. We provide that. We provide what we have. We don't know what exactly was reviewed by the analyst. Um, Why not? Because we did not ask that specifically. Uh, we did not want to air it in the in, in the deposition because. You know, that, that was our opportunity to speak to the analyst, and we confirmed that she did, in fact, review materials between Ms. Gardner and her attorneys. Uh, we just don't know exactly what those detail, th those detail. On that note, Your Honor, uh, we did not discuss, but it's, I think now is the right time. The state and I uh, and Mr. Carodi, on behalf of Ms. Gardner, agreed that Judge Foster could read the depositions that we took, we provided him transcripts. Um, and and I believe, unless the state has their now in your head, we all maintain that uh, you, I request that you read those. Okay, how many did you provide? Two, uh, Agent Nazario from uh, the Secret Service and Laura Butler, an analyst. 
analyst, excuse me, Lindsay, excuse me, Lindsay Butler, an analyst from ATF. And we would agree with that, Your Honor. And we will supplement it and provide you additional documents, the warrants, the, the court order from Judge Carbola. Will you have to provide that? I can provide it this week, Your Honor. Okay. By Wednesday, with copy to the state. And I don't know if, if this is necessary. At the deposition of Ms. Butler, she testified, and everyone was present, that she began reviewing an iCloud return. She observed a message she could not recall from an attorney in this interview between the client. She alerted the state. My response was, shut it down, send it out, stop reviewing. So what she, my view of her depo transcript or her depo testimony was, she saw one communication. Mr. Crotty did not ask what that communication was, but if they need to know what it is, certainly Ms. Butler, I can arrange for her to speak to them outside the presence of the state or in camera with the court to let them know the one message that she did view or see or realize was on that. But we have not reviewed anything. She didn't tell me the content of the message or provide it to me, so I have no idea what it is. But I don't know, because she's now out of state, if they're requesting her to give any kind of testimony regarding this issue in camera or otherwise, I can make arrangements for that as well. One, just so that we're clear that there is no guessing, why don't we have that done this week? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And just so I'm clear, the idea would be for- In camera. For you to talk to her in camera. No. Okay. For just the defense to interview her with- You, I'm going to make it a record. I'm going to seal it. You can ask her the question that you want to ask her. And that's the only way we're going to be able to get to the bottom of this. Understood on the record in front of Your Honor. Correct. Understood. And then we'll do it here in court. I'll close the proceedings in camera. You can make it a record. I'll seal the transcript. Okay? Yes, Your Honor. And I will not be present for that. Yes, that's correct. And I know this is so confusing because you haven't seen this stuff yet. That whole dialogue between the state and Mr. Crowley and what Lindsay Butler saw or didn't see is totally separate than the two issues that I have that she did see and said. Okay? So you're reading- I'm very- To me, Fernandez, his case and the issues presented are a similar issue in my mind because the state is saying that they have access to it. They said- That was my understanding that you all were saying it was evidence, not attorney-client privilege. So that's, to me, a simpler issue to resolve. At this point, I don't want any guessing. I want to be able to- For you to be able to identify the information accurately so that you can make whatever arguments you need to and then I can review whatever you believe would be necessary for me to make a decision. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. When do you think you can have contact with this witness? I can call her when I leave court. She is out of state. So she would either have to travel or do it by Zoom. Do you have any problems with Zoom testimony? No, Your Honor. Not for purposes of- That would be a lot easier to schedule. Yeah, not for purposes of this issue. Okay. Don't forget, we're still going to have- You know I'm not involved. You still have to go through the whole TUI process. The AUSA is going to have to approve it. You're going to have to specifically say what you're asking her to do. The AUSA- Is that who she is, a special agent? She's an analyst with the ATF. Yes, she does need a TUI letter. It was not a problem last time, I think, even with the- I'm not suggesting it's a problem. It's just a process. It takes a process. There's a difference. I understand how TUI works. If Mr. Cody can get me a letter today or tomorrow, I think we should be able to- We should be fine. Your Honor, I can get her a letter before close of business today. So it's something that needs to be arranged next week? Let me speak to her today, and I can let the parties know by email if I go get it done this week. Where is she out of state? Washington, D.C. Okay. Do you want to hold off on the materials? I'm going to push forward with Fernandez, okay? Since I- It seems like I have everything. And so, based on- I think I'm going to separate the two. Y'all aren't going to be appearing for these hearings together unless, you know, the attorneys 
want to come, but I'm not going to have Ms. Gardner present for Fernandez because the issues are separate. Um, the attorney-client privilege is separate, and the, even Ms. Gardner's attorney should not have any access to that information. So I'm going to separate these hearings. Judge, I guess the only exception would be if that we are going to take the testimony of Agent Nazario and, and Lindsey Butler on the record. I know we're going to provide your honor with the depositions, but that may be something that we would want to do together. Why? Why would we want to do it together? Right. So that we don't Did have she, Does she have some involvement? Well, I, I thought you asked the questions you I, had during deposition. Yeah. I think I flushed out my issue without ever addressing the specifics. I think I, I want to ask questions. I don't think I just as an aside, when 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 and if Mario is found guilty, they're going to shave his head like chuckles, right? I mean, that's a lot of hair he's got there. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, I, I, if the court's going to accept the transcripts and use those as substantive evidence for the motions, then I don't believe we'll need to recall these witnesses in person. Um, except for... Except for the ex parte in camera. Okay. Do y'all have any problem with that? No, Are y'all going to agree? Yes, Your Honor. So just real quick, again, if you're coming in late, Chad Daybell, the selection process will not be streamed today. Um, I, I, I could be wrong. I thought I saw somewhere it's because of privacy in that they have like 57 people in there. They can't all be like out. Like if they have them all in the courtroom at the same time, they're likely in the gallery. Then they're not anonymous. But I, I could be wrong. But that's that's my guess as they, uh, you know, whittle it down to the remaining jurors that will actually be on the jury. I was asking how long do you think the hearing would take? I'm gonna... Well, not to be perfect, but I'm not sure I'm gonna have to say. From our perspective, it'll be very great. Oh, shit. Capri Sun's in the chat. Tina, thank you so much. Giving a uh, membership to Mia. Thank you so much, Tina. You are awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. By the way, no one's late, folks. I didn't even have this planned, so you're not late. Everyone gets a tardy pass because I didn't even have this scheduled. Our last pretrial on this issue was 40 minutes. So uh, I, I want to say argument. You will have seen everything two to three hours. And maybe I'm way long, but I, these are complicated issues. How about, um, April 6th, I'm sorry, April 26th, uh, for Fernandez, and I'll give y'all the whole morning for mine, but maybe. Shut out. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I should, I should mention, if you are a Super Bowl, if you're either a member of my channel, Shannon's channel, or a patron, this Sunday, me and Shannon are going to do a show for members only that's some of the wildest body cam footage I've ever seen. The cool thing about it is no one gets hurt. There's no, like, violence in it. But it's funny. Babe will confirm. I mean, the dude in it is hilarious. Uh, there's it, it involves, later on, a lawsuit against the police because of what, what went down. This Sunday at 8 Eastern, you're not going to want to miss it. It's going to be good. Well, I don't know how much time to I have. I can't do the 19th, but it would have to be in the afternoon. I, I filled up my morning VOP hearings and a 3850. That's perfect. I'm free. Afternoon. I, I have a, a mediation that was set for that entire day. If I, 
if I had to move it, I guess I could, if there was no other choice. No, okay, so at this point, it's the 19 in the afternoon. I have a VOP hearing on May 3rd, but I'll move that, um, and I can give y'all the entire morning. May 3rd would be great for the defendants, right? Yes, sir. May 3rd. And okay. Did you say morning or afternoon? All morning. All morning. So from 9 to 12, you all have um, the court's time. All right, so case number four. The next court date will be May 3rd. 9 a.m. hearing on motion. And if you would put in the notes, Mr. Hathaway, four hours. Yes, ma'am. And Your Honor. I'm if, sorry, I broke that three hours. If, uh, for whatever reason, I can't imagine this is the case, but for whatever reason, Judge Foster marked up and you want clean copies or whatever, just have your JA reach out to us and we can get it to you right away. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we also, both the state and the defense, the only thing that wasn't mentioned is there's some case law that was provided and, and please review that as well for both. Okay. And uh, with that, may we be excused? Yes, thank you very much. Thanks. Um, Mr. Freeze. Judge, we would ask for that 419 afternoon. Your Honor, I understand. I do want to correct myself. In regards to Ms. Gardner's motion, I would ask that she be moved to the afternoon for that same reason. Okay. Thank you. Yes, thank you. 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 Thank you.
saying that as a potential date that you can throw out for her. I should not be in trial. We can have this hearing. I don't think that would take that long. Right, then we'll have minutes. April 19, 1 p.m. hearing the motion. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. May I be excused? Yes, thank you. All right, I guess that's it, folks. Um, so, yeah, folks, I, I hope if you haven't had a chance to watch the stream I did yesterday with uh, Jack, never a truer word, check it out. Like We only watched like – he, he did a lot. If you follow him on Instagram, he um, did a ton of work, and you could tell when we watched the video together all the stuff he had pointed out. It really blew my mind. I mean, I've watched that Wendy Adelson police interview so many times. Mm -hmm. And it just gave me another way to look at it again the next time I watch it. Um, so, you know, everyone was like, you got to do another one. You got to do a part two. We're doing a part two, April 21st, which is not this Sunday, because this Sunday is Shannon and I's exclusive, you know, our members only. It's going to be 421 at 3 p.m. Eastern. He's He said he's going to start. He's going to give me some good points to um, to bring up some good timestamps. And we're going to do that April 21st. He Jack is um, he is a, a language analyst. I don't know what he considered his check him out on never a true word. Check him out. Um, and by the way, he told me he's like, your community is awesome. You know, he got a bunch of new subs, a bunch of great comments. So thank you guys for following him. Give him a follow. Never a true word. Um, and we're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. Uh it's the 21st at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern. Very excited for that. Let me get his let me get his his link. Um, this this link I'm going to share has all of his links. His Twitter, his his. Uh, he just he analyzes what people say to like, are they telling the truth? Are they lying? You know, what? Why are they? saying certain things or whatever it, it was really good i i was really impressed i knew he was going to be good but he exceeded my expectations so that's but tonight folks so i guess you know there's really not i, I guess uh like i said chad daybell not streaming plus i was gonna have to pick up my son from school anyway in the afternoon plus there's the eclipse the whole thing is going on but tonight 8 p.m eastern you guys are all true crime fans and guess what Yindra Velasquez is a true crime fan. So just think about yourself. Like, I'm going to talk about this when I, I, I shouldn't probably. But anyway, I'm going to talk about this on the stream. Just think about you're a true crime fan. You you, you, file, you follow trials. And then all of a sudden, one day, you're going to go to on vacation. You're going to go on vacation with your friend, your good friend's childhood friend. You're going to go on vacation with her and her husband, who is also your childhood friend. You're going to go to Disney. A, group planned vacation and you find out that the husband aka Sigfredo Garcia is arrested and that they're not going and he's arrested for murder and then all of a sudden you later on you find out your good friend who is the godmother of your child is also arrested for murder of someone that you have no idea who this person is so now and then you you find out you get the FBI and police show up at your doorstep and tell you that they've been surveilling you that the that the van outside your house wasn't uh, a work van it was actually the FBI and they've been listening to your phone calls and they've been surveilling you and then you have to be deposed because you're going to be in a trial and then you're not only are you in one trial you're in two trials. That is what Yindra Velasquez had to deal with, with Katie McBanawa and Sigfredo Garcia being her friends. Like, can you imagine that? Like, just take a step and think of like your childhood friends, something happening with them. And then all of a sudden you're, 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 you're testifying at their, at their murder trial. Like it's, it's, it's so hard for me to even grasp. So I'm so excited to talk to Yendra, her first exclusive interview, folks. Her first exclusive interview. By the way, if you watch her her testimony, she's one of the witnesses 
that we would love if we were watching a trial because she was honest. She was she didn't like try to like she, she was like she was just great. She really was great. I am interviewing her tonight. Tonight at 8 p.m., folks. That's why I'm setting this up. Tonight at 8 p.m., Yindra Velasquez, her first interview. She's coming on today, tonight at 8 p.m., and it's before the men's championship NCAA game, which is at like 9.20. Um, our first exclusive interview with me. So I'm so excited to talk to her. Guys, I have so many questions. If I could show you my notes app, I mean, I've been, I walk the dogs, and I've been taking out my phone as I walk my dogs. <laughs> Let me just show you something if I could, if this will show up on the screen. I might have to tweet this later. Not only my notes app, but my reminders app. You know, I don't delete everything like Wendy. So here, here's some of the things I have on here. I, you probably can't see it well. All right, here we go. So I need to get ground beef, chicken. Then did they talk about the dad's birthday? <laughs> Milk. Why do you think she did this? <laughs> Like, that's how I, like, write. Oh, by the way, not only that, guys, not only that. Holy crap, not only that. She was babysitting their kids the day and night that Dan was shot. She was babysitting uh, Katie and Sigfredo's kids. And then they call. Then they call. She calls the next morning and is like, oh, Dan was in a car accident. Like it is wild. I cannot wait. To, I I have so many questions, and like, <laughs> I just hope I don't mess it up because I like I like I have so much I want to ask. Um, babe already got the milk. Babe already got the milk. Thanks, babe. Don't have to get milk and take that off the list, but I do want to keep on the list. My question: Why does she think she did it? Was it just for the money? Um. I have so many. By the way, also, folks, there's more to it. She hung out with. Char she was. There's a beach picture. The, the, a month before the murder. You guys, if you are familiar with this case, there's a there's a famous picture. It's Wendy Adelson, Katie McBonawa, and who? Yindra Velasquez. Um, Yindra Velasquez. She was there. She hung out. With Wendy and Charlie. That was the only time she got with Wendy. But I think she hung out with Charlie other times from her testimony. So I'm going to go into that. Uh, and yes, I will um, say for tonight's stream, and I'll mention it in the interview, there are some names for like privacy and security reasons. There are certain names we will not bring up. So if, if you see it, if you like bring it up in the chat, we're not going to respond to it. Just as at, 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 at Add, there was a request, and I'm going to honor that request. So just a heads up. You'll probably, if you know the case, you'll probably understand. But if you don't, don't worry. We'll we'll kind of guide you. There is a... Um... So anyway, that's going to be tonight at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um... I mean, if you guys want, since we don't have... Babe thought of this idea. It's a pretty good idea. Do you guys want to watch some of Yindra's um, testimony from the first trial? Well, since we don't really have, probably won't watch all of it because I still want to prepare for it. But we can watch some of her um, of her testimony. Hold on. She's great. I'm telling you, if we watch the trial with her, we would we would love her. And I'm sure she's going to be awesome on the. Um... So let's set this up here. All right, here we go. Oh, Tina gifting out a number, another membership, her second one today. Thank you so much. Tina Drew gets it. Tina, you are awesome. Thank you so much. All right. So let's squadushal over here. Here we go. Have a seat, please. Wait for 
Good morning. Good morning. Can you introduce yourself to the jury, please? Uh, my name is Yendra Velasquez Mascaro, Y I N D R A V E L A Z Q U E Z M A S C A R O. And where do you currently reside? Miami, Florida. Are you working? I am. What do you do? I'm a title insurance agent. Do you know the defendant in this case, Catherine Magbanawa? I do. And how, how do you know her? A uh, childhood friend, and she's the godmother to my child. And she's the godmother to my child. How many children do you have? Two. And she's the godmother to one of them? To one of them, the youngest. You said your childhood friends. Did y'all go to high school together? We did. And did you maintain a close friendship in high school? No. Okay. Not in high school. What about after high school? Yes. When after high school did y'all start to become? My more... 25th birthday, to be exact. And when is your birthday? October 5th. Of what year? 1986. I'm sorry to ask, but it's okay. 1986. Correct. So, if y'all reconnected or started getting closer on your 25th birthday, that would be around October 2011. Correct. Was it after that time that you had this child that Catherine McVanwa became the godmother to? Yes. And when was that child born? She was born three, four, fifteen. Do you know Secreto Garcia? I do. How do you know him? Childhood friend as well. Did he attend high school with you and Ms. Mm, not really. Um, he just we just knew each other from the neighborhood and stuff like that. We all grew up together. How would you describe your relationship or strike that? Did you also know him due to his involvement with Ms. Magbanwa? Correct. And what was their relationship like? They were dating for a pretty long time. They started dating in high school, didn't they? Yes. And they were on again, off again throughout the course of their relationship? That's correct. What about Luis Rivera? Do you know him? I do. How do you know him? Childhood friend as well, and I know his brothers and sisters. Is he older than you all? Yes. Um, so again, folks, like just like three of your childhood friends, just kids you used to ride your bike around the block with, go to high school with, and now you are sucked into this. Completely innocent, had nothing to do with it. Did he go to high school with all of you? No, ma'am. And by the way, we're going to share her Twitter and TikTok. She has a TikTok where she talks about the experience. Like when, when at, one, at one point when they had to give her a subpoena, she had moved. They didn't know she moved. And like four cops are just outside of her house. Like. Do you know whether or not Catherine McVanwa knew Louis Rivera? Um, through Sigfredo, yes. Were Catherine McVanwa and Sigfredo, or strike that. Were Catherine McVanwa and Louis Rivera very close? No, ma'am. What about Sigfredo Garcia and Luis Rivera? Were they close? Yes. Would you describe their relationship as being brothers? Yes, ma'am. And we'll get into it as they watch. Again, she had to testify in this trial and then Katie's retrial. Oh, and by the way, folks, she was subpoenaed for Charlie's trial, excuse me, and found out last minute that she didn't have to testify, which I did not know. She almost had to te testify at Charlie's trial. She gets a lot of information in the case that they needed, like about Katie's uh, employment and about the car that she got from Charlie and Harvey. You were aware that eventually at some point, Luis Rivera and Sigredo Garcia were arrested you know, for this incident. Prior to that, um, say back in 2014, 2015, um, did you know of Luis Rivera being in a gang? No, ma'am. I want to ask you some questions next about um, Ms. McBanois' employment. Are you familiar with her employment over the years? Yes. Or at least after your 25th birthday when you all got yes. closer. When you first reconnected with her um, on your 25th birthday in October 2011, where was she working at that time? Uh, she was doing brand marketing, um, like for different um, clubs and that stuff, and the dental office as well. So brand marketing is doing what exactly for clubs? So when there's like uh, different liquors that they're trying to introduce into the club and stuff like that, she would do, you know, like the tastings and stuff like that outside of the clubs. So kind of like promotion. Correct. And that she, she had started at the brand marketing and then started working at a dental office. That's correct. And the dental office that she worked at, um, where was that located? South Beach. 
And do you recall the dental office name? Uh, so be something. I don't just, remember. The Sophie Dental. Center? There you go, Sophie. Yes. And approximately what year did she start working at Sophie Dental? This is a good question, and I meant to look it up. Does anyone know the answer of George's co-counsel in the first trial? Sarah came on later, but I don't know the name of this attorney that's questioning right now. That's one thing uh, that that's uh, I'm embarrassed. I should know that, and I don't. Was around the same time that we reconnected so I would say it was in the 2011 portion of the year would it refresh your memory to see your deposition transcript sure as to when she started working in take it up one moment judge well no well, how long she well I'm looking for that do you recall how long she worked at Sophie Dental um, not really no do you know what she did for them I believe she worked on the front desk. At some point while she was working at Sophie Dental, did she stop doing the liquor promotion or the brand yes. marketing? Yes. Um, while she was still at Sophie Dental, did she pick up a, a new different job in addition to the dental office? During the time that she was at, at Sophie Dental? Yes. Did she start working at Club Fate then? Yes. And when did she begin working at Club Fate? I don't recall the year. Now here's the time I want to, would your depot sure. refresh you? Yes. May I approach, Your Honor? You may. For defense counsel, I'm on page 31, line 16 through 25. <coughs> you could just read silently to yourself here on page 31. Um, and let me know when you're done reading. 2013. Okay. Okay. okay, so she began working at Club Fate. <coughs> she began working at Club Fate in the latter part of 2013. Correct. What did she do for Club Fate? Uh, she did bottle service and bartending. Yeah, so as you can see, she is direct. She's not trying to hide anything. She's just answering to the best. You know, we've seen some witnesses, even like what I like to call, or we used to call non-party witnesses in my work, basically folks that really didn't have anything. But like we've seen people who are like douches, even though they have nothing to do with it. She's awesome. Like thinking, like thinking about like the producers and the Rush trial, like they were jackasses. Like she's awesome. So she was doing Sophie Dental and... Club Fate or only Club Fate at that time? Mostly Club Fate. Um, at one point, she stopped working on Sophie Dental. So there was a time period that those two employments overlapped, but eventually she quit the dental office and just did Club Fate. That's correct. Uh, did she, how long did she work at Club Fate? A uh, couple months. Did she tell you why she quit working there? Uh, they were having issues with their accounting, um, and she was getting paychecks that were bouncing, so she was over it at that point. So at Club Fate, she was receiving paychecks? Yes. They just weren't going through. Correct. So that's why she quit there. And then did she get start working somewhere different? Yes. Where did she start working at that time? Hollywood Live. Did you work at Hollywood Live at the same time that Ms. McBanois did? Yes, ma'am. <coughs> when did you quit working at Hollywood Live? Uh, shortly before becoming pregnant. Well, when finally when I found out that I was pregnant. And this is the pregnancy? With my second child. Okay. That was, I found out in July of 2014. So you found out you're pregnant, it was actually July 4th, 2014. That's that correct. Right? And you quit shortly before finding out you were pregnant on July 4th, 2014? Yes. Eventually, did Catherine McBanois quit working at Hollywood Live as well? Yes. Did she quit before you or after you? Before me. So I'm trying to create a timeline. If you quit before finding out you were pregnant July 4, 2014, and she quit before you, she must have quit before July 2014. Yes. And approximately how long before you quit did she quit? I want to say it was about a month. Helen Steiner is here. Quick shout out to Helen, who's always been so awesome, who got our friends some new toys, some new treats, actually, I should say, bones. The friends are very happy about it. Thank you so much, Helen. A month and a half. Maybe two. So maybe April or May 2014 she yes. quit? And I'm, I hate to, I'm not trying to be rude, but the court reporter, 
I need to make sure I finish my question before you give your answer so that it's clear for the record. You got it. I know it's hard to do that. So if you quit prior to July and she quit maybe a month or two before, would it be fair to say she quit Hollywood Live maybe May of 2014? Sounds correct. Do you know why she quit working there? She was over the club scene already. She didn't want to work in the clubs anymore. She you get tired. What is the next employment for Catherine McVanwa that you know of? Um, she started working at a dermatologist's office. Do you know the name of that dermatology office? I do not. Do you know who owns that dermatology office? A Charlie's best friend and former roommate. I just, I don't remember his name. When you say Charlie, who do you mean? Charlie Allison. How long did she work at Broward, or excuse me, work at the dermatology office? It was just a couple of months. Where did she work after leaving <coughs> the dermatology office? She was working with me again um, at Optimar International Realty. What was she doing at Optimar? She was an assistant to one of the realtors. How long did she work as an assistant to one of the realtors at Optimar? Um, it was for a short period of time. She stopped working um, in May, end of May of 2016. Do you know why she quit working at Optimar Realty? Well, Mr. Garcia got arrested. Um, we were going to be going out of town, and when that happened, um, you know, they just threw her off. She just stopped working. So her last day at Optimar was the day Mr. Garcia was arrested. That's correct. Yeah, so you hear that? They were working together. Sigfredo gets arrested, and she and, and uh, Katie just stops going to work at that point. Speaking of Mr. Garcia, mm -hmm. uh, did you ever know him to be employed or have a steady job? Uh, I only knew of the last job that he had um, right before he got arrested. And do you recall what that was? Uh, I don't remember the first word of the business, but it was something capital funding, if I'm not mistaken. If I said the word, would you maybe remember it? Yes. Was it rapid capital funding? Yes. But that wasn't until much later, like in 2016? Yes. Prior to that, you have no knowledge of his having a steady employment? No, ma'am. You mentioned earlier that um, the owner of the dermatology place that mm -hmm. Catherine McVanwell worked um, was, you said, Charlie Adelson's best friend and roommate, or prior roommate. Mm -hmm. um, how do you know Charlie Adelson? Because he was dating Catherine. Do you know how long they dated for? I don't recall the exact amount of time, but it wasn't, I want to say maybe a year. Did you ever meet him? So I saw the question here, is she still friends with her? I can ask her. But I got the impression once she got arrested, kind of, she didn't talk to her anymore. Like, the, once Sigfredo got arrested, the, I mean, I think she goes over it in his testimony. She kind of doesn't really talk much to Katie. And then once Katie gets arrested, I don't think she talked to her after that. But I, I can ask her tonight. During that time? I did. By the way, again, again, just like I keep having to remind myself, just take a step back. Think of your childhood friend. Really good friend. Just think of that right now. Think about it. like think of this person. Right now she is sitting, and like diagonal from her is that childhood friend, two of them that are on trial for murder. Like it's such a wild situation. Do you know how they met? Yes. Uh, he was a specialist that would come in to Sophie Dental. Um, and they met because she worked in the front desk. Was he a regular doctor at Sophie Dental? No, ma'am. He would be called in specifically for certain clients that needed him for implants or whatever it was. And he's a specialist. He's a periodontist. That's correct. Okay, so just every now and then he'd come in, and that's how they met and began dating. Yes. So would it be fair to say that the time frame of their relationship at least had to have initiated during her employment at Sophie Dental? Yes. <clears throat> and by the way, this is all not even taking into account... As she just said, she has kids. So, like, 
she has been subpoena multiple times. Like she has to like handle all this as she's just it's not like her life stops and she like she's working, she has kids, she's got to deal with childcare, got to go to two trials, got to go to depositions like Do you know when they stopped dating? I don't recall. When she when Miss McVanwell was dating Charlie Adelson, did she bring <coughs> Mr. Adelson around you a lot? Just a couple of times. Okay. Um, it wasn't like all the time that they were together or anything like. That. You better believe I'm going to ask her about those couple of times, and if I, I get to ask the questions that the defense, that the prosecution and the defense can ask, which is, uh, was is he as big a douche as he seems like he is? Like that, but it, we did hang out a couple of times socially. So you would describe it as rarely seeing him? Yeah, I would. I didn't see him much. Did she talk about him much? No. When Miss McBano was dating Charlie Adelson, was Secreto Garcia still in the picture? Uh, here and there, uh, he was just pretty much in her life for the kids at the moment. Say that again? For the kids, mainly. But he was here actually trying to be a better father and yes. back in, in the relationship yes. with Miss McBano? Yes. <clears throat> Would you describe Mr. Adelson as being well? Christine says this is about Shana Gardner or the Adelsons. Top says Shana Gardner. Yeah, this was a Shana Gardner appearance that went pretty quickly. So I have pivoted to watching some of Yindra Velasquez's testimony as I will be interviewing her tonight at 8 p.m., her first exclusive interview. Um, and as Chad Daybell's process, jury selection process will not be streamed to the public today. He's comfortable. I mean, yeah, he has a lot of toys and, and money, right? Yes, but we also live in Miami, where... So wealth is relative, maybe. Yes. In Miami. Uh, but he did own, own a limousine. Yes, he did. He owned multiple vehicles. Yes. He, um, he owned jet skis. Yes. A boat. Yes, a small boat. He had a place on the water in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. During the time that... Uh, Ms. McVanwa and Charlie Adelson were dating. Um, were you aware of uh, Ms. McVanwa getting a breast augmentation? Yes. Do you know how she found the doctor to perform that breast augmentation? Um, apparently, uh, Mr. Adelson knew the doctor. Did she tell you how much that um, surgery would cost? She predicted it was going to be about six or seven thousand dollars. And you mentioned that this breast augmentation was during the period that she was dating Charlie Adelson. Right? Yes. Who took care of her during her recovery after the breast augmentation? Mr. Garcia. Did you ever meet Charlie Adelson's sister, Wendy? Adelson? I did. And when did you meet her? Uh, Father's Day weekend. Do you recall of what year? 2000. 15, I want to say. It's on my depo. I'm looking for it. Yeah. Would that help you remember if I can yes. find it? Yes. <coughs> May I approach your honor? You may. For defense counsel, I'm on page 98, line 4 and 5. Two and fourteen. It's the yes. Father's Day of two thousand fourteen. Yes. What were the circumstances surrounding your meeting with Wendy Adelson? We just met up at the pool and at the beach um, downstairs from her parents' place. That's down in Miami. Yes. So I'm really just this 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 pool beach meeting. Like I have so many questions. So, I mean, I'm not going to reveal all of them, but just so many questions I have for. Like she hung out with Wendy. And this is a month. This is a month, folks, before Dan Markella's murder. This is one month. She is hanging out with Charlie Adelson, who is now convicted of murder of Dan Markell, Wendy Adelson, Katie Magbano, who's like, I'm just picturing Charlie being the guy who's like flexing and like doing backflips into the pool, trying to impress everyone, like 
coked out of his mind, mate. Who knows? I'm I'm just dying to talk about this. To ask her about this meeting. Correct in South Beach. Mm-hmm. Who paid? They had like drinks. Who paid for, for like the drinks that they had there? Who 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 wanted to take the picture? Where did they post it to the gram? Like I, it's just so many. There that day, uh, Charlie, Katie, myself, um, and sister. I'm gonna show you. Here it is, the famous picture. Do you recognize the people in the photograph? Yes. Who is uh, the individual on the far left? Katie. Captain Michaela? Yes. And who is the individual in the middle? Wendy. And then who is that on the far right? Me. And if the, that photograph had, you know, every picture has data associated with it, if the data associated with that photograph um, says June 15, 2014, do you remember that being consistent with Father's Day in that year? Yes, because my, my child was with her dad that day. Again, folks, June 15th, Dan Markell was shot and murdered, executed July 18th. think you've been, been able to remember a time frame for when Catherine McDaniel and Charlie Adelson broke up. But do you recall it being several months before Ms. McDaniel got back with Sigredo Garcia? Yes. And when did Ms. McDaniel and Mr. Garcia get back together? Um, I want to say it was the Pacquiao fight, um, that, the night of the Pacquiao fight. And that's the, you're referring to the Pacquiao? Manny Pacquiao boxing match, yes. The Pacquiao Mayweather fight. In fact, yes, the Pacquiao Mayweather fight, Does that's May, correct. Does May 2nd, 2015 sound right? Yes, ma'am. And she had broken up with uh, Mr. Adelson earlier in that year, maybe January or yes. February? Yes, that's 2015. correct. And once they resumed their relationship after the May 2015 Pacquiao fight, did they begin living with each other again? Yes. At some point, did Ms. McVanua um, drive a Mazda? Yes. A white Mazda? Yes, ma'am. Is there, did there come a time that she began having mechanical problems with the Mazda? Yes, she did. Do you remember if those problems were prior to the Pacquiao fight in May 2015 or after? They were continuous, honestly. All the time problems with yes. the Mazda? Fair enough. Do you know who paid for the repairs to her Mazda? I do not. Did Mr. Adelson, meaning Charlie, ever give Catherine uh, McDaniel a car? Yes, he did. And when did he give her that car? Um, when she stopped driving the Mazda because that's it. The Mazda just stopped working all together. Do you recall the Lexus? Did you already say it was a Lexus? I'm sorry. No, I just what? said it was a vehicle. It was a Lexus. It was a black Lexus. I apologize. So okay. This is the Lexus. Um, and. You don't remember when he gave her that Lexus? No. Was she working at Optimar at that time? She was. So this would have been late 2015, early 2016? Yes, that sounds right. And she was with uh, Sigredo Garcia at that time? She was. Was the Lexus a brand new car? It wasn't brand new. It was older. It was an older model. Had you ever physically been inside of it? Yes. How would you describe the condition of this Lexus? Uh, it was well kept. Would you describe it as pristine? Yeah. Those are actually your words. That's correct. Did Catherine McVanna indicate that she purchased that vehicle from Charlie Adelson? No, ma'am. Did she ever say anything about giving him any money at all for that car? No, ma'am. Not to my knowledge. Was it your understanding it was a gift? Yes. So, like, here, here's another question that just I didn't even think that I should ask her. Like, she didn't know any of this was going on, right? But, like... So this is late 2015, 2016. Uh, Katie, her good friend, has already broken up with Charlie. So do you think, I want to ask Ginger, like, all of a sudden, you know, maybe she thought nothing of it, which I might not. But, like, again, I'm just trying to take this back to, like, this is my childhood friend. And now she's broken up, but they still hang out. Like, obviously, she had no idea. But, like, it's just wild. Like, now she's getting the car, which is Harv's car, by the way, folks. Harvey's car. 
Now she's had mechanical problems with the Mazda. Does she then begin to have mechanical problems with this yes. Christine Lexus? Yes. And she was still dating Mr. Garcia at that time? Yes. And do you know who paid for the repairs to the Lexus? I do not. I want to jump to jump back a little bit in time to 2014. Okay. Was there ever a time that Ms. Nibanoa asked you to watch her children? Here it is, folks. Here's the part where she talks about watching the children. Here we go. To 2014. Okay. Was there ever a time that Ms. Nibanoa asked you to watch her children? Yes. When was that? July 2014. July 2014? Correct. And was it weird for her to ask you to watch her kids or normal occurrence or what? No, normal. I mean, if she needed a favor, I would do it. If I needed a favor, she would do it, you know, in regards to the kids. Do you know why she didn't ask Mr. Garcia to take care of his kids? No. She didn't call for speculation. I'm asking if she knew. Over room. Do you I do know? Not. I do not. So she leaves the kids with you, and did they stay with you overnight? They did. They ended up falling asleep, so they just stayed there. There was no point of her picking them up. It was too late in the day. Then the next day, did you receive a call from Ms. Magbanawa? Yes. And what did she tell you at that time? Uh, she had told me that Charlie's brother-in-law had had an accident. What kind of accident? It was, I, I literally, they literally said an accident. So you watch her kids. Next day, she says, Charlie's, Charlie Adelson's brother has had an accident. Brother-in-law. Brother-in-law. And did she say, what if anything Charlie Adelson was going to have to do because of that accident? That he was going to go up uh, to see what you know the situation was and to see his sister and make sure everything was okay. And this was July 2014? Yes. So just, just think about that. Like, she asked her to watch the kids the day Dan Markell was shot, the day after Katie is calling her. And to, to Yindra, obviously at the time, this means nothing to her. But then can you think of that aha moment that Yindra had when she realized after Sigfredo gets arrested and after Katie gets arrested and after the information come out? Can you imagine the aha moment she has and is like, holy shit. I was babysitting her kids the day that Dan Markell was shot. And why wasn't Sigfredo... Gar why did Katie not give the kids to Sigfredo? Oh, because Sigfredo was the man executing Dan. I mean... Um, did you later find out that the accident was Dan Markell being executed in his garage? Correct. Do you remember when Sigfredo Garcia was arrested? In this case, I believe earlier you said it was May 2016? Correct. And y'all had plans that weekend? Yes. What were they? We were going to Disney. And who all was going on that trip? My ex-husband, myself, my two kids, Katie, Mr. Garcia, and the two kids. So again, May 2016, she is planning a two-family vacation to Disney. That's what she's thinking about. May 2016, until this happens. And did Ms. Nagbanwa continue to go on that? She did not. Trip with you all? After Mr. Garcia was arrested, what type of contact did you have with Ms. Nagbanwa after that? Uh, not much. Uh, here and there, I would just ask her how the kids were doing and how she was holding up. You would describe it as her kind of going off the radar, right? Yes. She didn't really talk to anybody at that time? No, ma'am. Has she ever, meaning Ms. Nibano, ever talked to you about Mr. Garcia being arrested? No. Or any of the news stories no. uh, around this case? No. Are you aware of any relationship between Catherine Nibano and Charlie Adelson's parents, Donna and Harvey Adelson? With Harvey, yes. And what was the nature of that relationship? She would get done to work from Harvey. So purely professional? Yes. Did Catherine McBanwa ever work for the Adelson Institute? Not that I'm aware. Did she ever work for Charlie? Not that I'm aware. And I apologize, Charlie. <coughs> Adelson. 
Did she, I know you said not that you're aware, but did mm -hmm. she ever say anything to you about employment with the Adelsons? No. I got one moment, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. Identification. Your Honor, may I approach? You bet. I'm showing you what I've marked for identification as. Case Exhibit 60. <coughs> do you recognize the people and objects in State's Exhibit 60? Yes. And how do you recognize them? That's Katie and Charlie. And do you recognize any of the vehicles in this photograph? That's the Lexus that was driven, and that was Charlie's vehicle at the time. Okay, and are these accurate depictions of the condition of those two vehicles, the Lexus as well as the... Uh, is that a Mercedes? Yes, it is. I'm sorry. Being driven by Mr. Adelson? Yes. During the times that you testified about today? Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, at this time I'd offer into evidence States Exhibit 60. Any objection? No, Mr. Lippert. Only objection, Judge, is she can't testify to when that was taken. So what? She didn't test she can't testify to when it was taken. She said during the time that she testified to, that's over a two year time. Do you have any idea when this was? I do not. I know that those are their vehicles, but I do not when that was taken. Can I ask an additional question? No. And my main point here is, are these the accurately reflect the condition of the vehicle in question, the Lexus that was given by Mr. Adelson to Catherine McBanois? Yes, ma'am. I'll overrule the objection. Good night. Thank you. I have no further questions. So as you can see, folks, I mean, I'm going to I'm going to continue to play the cross. This is not this is not a witness like Yendra was a key, important witness, folks. Like that was a lot of information that they got from her. Good morning, Ms. Velasquez Mascara. Am I, am I, I pronounced that correctly? Velasquez. Velasquez. I apologize. I represent Secreto Garcia. I'm going to ask you some questions with regards to your involvement, as well as your involvement in this investigation, as well as your testimony today, okay? Okay. So you indicated that you've known Secreto Garcia since childhood, correct? Yes. You also indicated that you knew Luis Rivera also since childhood, is that correct? Yes. And when you describe childhood, would that be teenagers or before that? Before that. So eight years old, 10 years old, something around there? Around there. Okay, so you would agree with me. So around 20, 25 years, you've known Luis Rivera? Yes. Have you ever gone to the beach with Mr. Rivera? The beach? Yes. I mean, we live in South Florida, right? As in like gone to the water and gone to the beach no, with no. him? No, no. Ever been socializing with him outside during the summertime? No. Did you ever go to the pool with him? No. Did you ever spend any time alone with him? No. <clears throat> so when you say he's a childhood friend, this is just someone that you met at an early age. Correct. And that he would be, would it be closer to say that he was maybe an acquaintance versus a friend? Yes. Would you call him on your cell phone? No. Have you ever called him on your cell phone? No. And in today's day and age, I have to ask, have you ever text messaged him? No. Send him an Instagram direct message? No. A Facebook, uh, 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 Facebook message? No. A tweet? No. Okay. So this is simply someone that you've known kind of at arm's length, right? Yes. And they also asked you, the government asked you, if you knew whether or not Mr. Rivera was a Latin king, correct? Yes. And your answer was no. No. And you'll agree with me that, as you indicated before, this was kind of an arm's length relationship, correct? Correct. Have you ever seen Mr. Rivera without a shirt on? No. Were you aware that he had a gigantic tattoo? 
this is about to be one of my favorite parts with the judge. We love this judge. Get ready for this. Here it comes. Did you see Mr. Rivera without his shirt on? No. Were you aware that he had a gigantic tattoo? Of Mr. Sangonet, she just said she'd never seen him with his shirt off. So move on. No problem. <laughs> judge Atkins, he did that a ton with Tato because remember, like, similar to Tato, but, like, she doesn't have an attorney really in this case. Like, the prosecution isn't, like, her witness. You know what I mean? Like, so they're not going to object. So a lot of times during this trial, if you haven't watched it, the judge, um, like, butts in and helps the people on the stand if, like, the attorneys are being jabronis, just, just like uh, Sam uh, Zengana. Zengana, I can't pronounce it. Were you aware that he had a tattoo on his stomach? No. The man that stared into the light and almost went blind. Let's talk about um, your knowledge of Charlie is, if you don't mind. Okay. When did you first, if you recall, remember hearing Charlie Charlie <clears throat> Ailson being mentioned? When she was work when Katie was working at Sophie Dental, she told me about him. And roughly, what was the month and year of that? I don't recall. She asked me, and I don't recall. What year was it? 2013, 2014? I want to say it was 13. Yes. 13. Good. And you indicated that you heard Charlie Adelson's name from Ms. McBanawa, correct? That's correct. And you heard it in a reference to, I met a guy? Correct. A cute guy? Yes. A rich guy? She didn't say rich. She just said he was a cute guy, nice guy, that, you know, was giving her attention. At any point, did you believe that they had uh, an actual relationship other than just some guy that she met that was cute? No, I just thought they were casually dating. Were you aware if Mr. Garcia had knowledge of this casual dating? He did. Was he happy about it? He was not. On a scale of one to ten, one being happy about Sangano, he he loves himself a scale. This is not the first time he asks her about a scale, and just wait to the next time. It's so funny. About it, ten being furious. Was he more like a ten? Yes. Would you say the number ten? Yes. On a scale of one to ten, it doesn't get any higher than ten, correct? Correct. You'll agree with the members of this jury that Mr. Garcia, my client, wanted to have a relationship with Ms. McMahon, correct? Correct. At any time, did you see Charlie Adelson with my client? I did not. If my client would have seen Charlie, based on your knowledge of how angry he was about the relationship, do you think that my client would have attempted to attack Mr. Adelson? Objection, speculation. Sustained. Do you think my client would have helped Mr. Adelson? Objection, speculation. Sustained. Are you, are you aware of the theory in this case? Theory for whom? The theory of the government. Objection, speculation. Sustained. <clears throat> Give me a second, Jim. You indicated on direct examination that it was the Pacquiao fight, Mayweather Pacquiao fight, where my client and Miss McBanawa got back together, correct? Rekindled, yes. Rekindled is another word of saying that they were back together. Yes. Okay. They, were, they were boyfriend and girlfriend again, correct? Yes. And this was, the prosecutor gave the exact date, May 2nd, 2015, correct? Correct. <coughs> you watched the children as a result of a favor from Ms. McBanawan the night before Dan Markell got shot, correct? Correct. And that was in July of 2014? Correct. So 
from July 2014 to May 2015, that's about 10 months? More or less. During this 10 month period, was Katie seeing Mr. Adelson? Yes. <clears throat> when did Ms. Magmanola When did Ms. Magmanola get her uh, cosmetic surgery? October. Of 2014? Correct. And this is the same time that she was dating Mr. Adelson, correct? Yes. Charlie Adelson? Yes. And by dating, I am making a reference that they were still romantically involved, correct? Correct. So they would, to your knowledge, were they sleeping over at each other's house? I wouldn't know. To your knowledge, were they romantically involved? Yes. And by romantically involved, I mean having sex. Yes. So after July 14th, Ms. McBanawa was still having sex with Charlie Anderson, correct? Yes. And in <coughs> October, several months after Mr. Markell was murdered, Ms. McBanawa got breast enhancement surgery, correct? Correct. And the doctor that she went to was at the direction of Charlie Anderson, correct? Yes. And Mr. Garcia's level of anger about this relationship, maybe now a 12? Are we still on a scale from 1 to 10? Correct. Well, if I were 1 to 10, then it would be 10, not 12. That is why. Uh, just another reason how she's awesome. I love that moment so much. I love it. I love that moment. Uh, hey, asshole, you kept asking me for 10, so don't say 12. That was such a great moment to shove it in his stupid face. You'll agree with me that, well, let me ask you this. One of the things that, that the government asked you about was the Adelston, Adelston Institute, which is the dental uh, institute, correct? Yes. And the owner of that institute is who? Harvey. Harvey is. So if someone were to do research on the institute, he's the owner, correct? Correct. And by research, I mean if someone goes on Google, the Adelson Institute would be related to Harvey Adelson, correct? Correct. Now, you indicated that during her recovery time from her augmentation surgery, the my client took care of her, right? He did. And that would be at Ms. McBanwell's home, correct? Yes where they have children in common, correct? They do. And after my client cared for her while she recovered, mm -hmm. afterwards, she was still dating Charlie Edison, correct? <coughs> yes. And by dating, I mean having a sexual relationship with Charlie Edison, correct? Correct. So now maybe my client's anger is at a 13 out of 10? Possibly, yes. No further questions. All right, we'll, we'll take a break. We'll take 15 minutes. That is not her. the end of this, folks, because uh, there's redirect, and she has a, um, a jury question, I believe. So I just don't remember. What's the next? Is this the next one on the playlist? Or is this the same one I'm watching now? Your so, so the weird thing about this is, so they have a break, and then it must go to back to Tara, because like they, they they have a break, and that ends that video, and this is the next video, but it, it's a little disjointed. Where was she living at that time? In North Bay Village. Okay, and what is that? It's a city in Miami. And was she living in like a, a high-rise condo? Or yes. Is it more like an apartment? Yeah, it was an apartment. All right. And she kicked him out of the house? Yes. All right. Can you describe for the jury, like, was she finished with him? Yes. What was the problem? It was a small choice Objection. relationship. Objection. Does. Sustained. Did you know why she broke up with him? I've sustained the objection. So she kicks him out? Yes. And who was she then living with at the time? Her mom. 
Her mom? Yes. Anyone else? The kids. Okay. So that is around the time that she met Charlie Adelson in 2013. Is that a yes? Yes. Yes, and I, I'm, I'll do that if I see you nod your head because it's just for the court reporter to get it down, okay? You got it. Okay. Now, was Catherine frustrated with the fact that Sigfredo wasn't helping? Yes. All right. Um, and I want to talk now about, because I want to kind of... Yes, if you're coming in late and you see that the title is Shana Gardner... That appearance went very quickly. If you if you scroll back to the beginning, you can watch it. Uh, we are now just watching some testimony from Yindra Velasquez from the Adelson case, who I will be interviewing tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern. Hope you can join us. I'm going chronological order of when you guys were working at the clubs, okay? Now, the state tried to get you to get a specific date of May 2014 is when she broke up. Can you say... For certain that that is when she, that she um that she stopped working at the clubs. No. Okay. Is, are you trying to give an approximation? Correct. I'm going to give you another event that may jog your memory. You remember when Catherine got her breast augmentation, correct? Yes. That was in October of 2014. Correct. correct. All right. And we'd know because her records would reflect that. Yes. All right. Do you remember if she ever went back to the clubs after getting the breast enhancement? I don't recall. If there were pictures on Facebook that would reflect that, yes, it's a good indicator because it shows. Correct. All right. Is it fair to say that the breast enhancements, it's a little obvious to tell from the pictures? Yes. Okay. Now, when Sigfredo Garcia was arrested. Correct. That was in May of 2016. Yes. Okay. They had gotten back together at this time, right? Yes. All right. They were living together at that time. Yes. And... How was Catherine shocked when he was arrested? Yes. Okay. Now the state was asking about, you know, she kind of cut you off. Isn't it true that her lawyer at the time told her not to talk to anybody? Objection, hearsay. Uh -huh. I'll sustain the objection. Now, you had described that relationship with Charlie Adelson mm -hmm. as not being serious. Correct. Okay. She didn't call him, that's my boyfriend. No. Okay. Um, and... So, uh, the Society page, who, by the way, if you're, if you're familiar with the uh, Adelson case, definitely give them a follow on, um, on the YouTube and the Twitter. Great, great account, great videos, so make sure you give... He uh, said he's sharing my link tonight, and I said, uh, I hope people don't give you shit when you share my link, because Judy got shit on her, and I feel awful about it, because uh, AA Legal, Judy, she's awesome. She shared my link for this interview tonight, and some lady, this freaking lady who's got, who just hates me so much because I laughed at Tato's, I, he, I laughed at Tato's picture that he drew for the FBI, because... I mean, it looks like a two-year-old did it, <laughs> but nonetheless, it, she, she has like an agenda against me now where she's going to other creators' posts and she's, oh, I, I won't watch it because I can't stand it because he he said something about Tato. You know, she's defending Tato, which, by the way, I think Tato, you know, is credible. Um, and if not for him and all his testimony, we wouldn't be here. But let's not forget, he was the man driving with Sigredo Garcia. For, during the murder. I mean, trust me, compared to the Adelson's Tato, you know, is credible. He came, to, he, he did the, he did the right thing, but let's also not forget the man was a, it was a involved with the murder. Like, and this lady is like so mad at me that I made fun of his picture that he drew. And then someone else was in, in Judy's comments, mad at me for what I said to Hannah Gutierrez. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like these people coming at me, like, I don't mind if they come at me on my, like, whatever I just respond or, but now, like, now, like, Judy does a nice thing to like promote me like and say hey and like people are giving her shit that she's got to deal with I just felt bad about it let's talk about how much she was working around that time now you're a you're a mother of two young children right yes how busy are you extremely okay and you are you work full-time I do okay not a lot of free time to do a lot of things no all right um are your kids about as young as Catherine's are yes all right and
Now, I want to talk about, you had mentioned that Catherine had said, this is what the, the state got out on direct, that Catherine had told you that Charlie is the one that recommended the doctor. Yes. Okay. Now, this is not the first time that you've testified to that, right? Correct. Two agents came to you at your job, correct? Yes. And that was way back in 2016, right? Yes. Where did they come and see you? My job. At your job. At this at Optima Realty, right? That's correct. Can you describe those detectives for me? Uh, there was an FBI agent and a Tallahassee detective. Okay. And who were they looking for? They were looking for Catherine. Okay. But you said that you knew her and they decided to talk to you, right? Correct. All right. Did they record your conversation in any way? All right, I'm going to post. I, I mentioned Judy. I saw someone ask. Judy's uh, channel is AA Legal Focus, another great account to follow regarding the Adelsons. I just threw it in the chat. Make sure you follow the Society page, uh, AA Legal Focus. These are the people that I would recommend. The Society page, AA Legal Focus, um, uh, Katie Cool Lady, of course, Fancy Fiction, um, all... And I'm sure there's more than I'm, I'm forgetting, but just some off the top of my head. Great, great accounts that um, cover this case. Not that I'm aware. But they wrote down notes, right? They did. Okay. And then they prepared an affidavit of your words, correct? Correct. Did you have an opportunity to review that affidavit? When it came up online. When it was released to the media, right? Correct. Did they accurately reflect your words? Uh, no. Overall. Oh. Did they accurately reflect your words? No. Had the officers put down something that you did not say? Correct. Okay. You brought this to the attention of the state's attorney when your deposition was conducted, right? Correct. Okay. But they didn't ask you about that on direct? No. <coughs> now, even though they were broken up, okay, Sigfredo Garcia, he still had to help take care of his kids, right? Yes. Is it fair to say that even though she was dating Charlie Adelson, she was in constant communication with Sigfredo? Yes. Is it fair to say that there would be days that she would be calling his phone because she can't find him? Yes. He'd go missing for a few days? Yes. She'd have no idea where he was? Yes. Okay. Is that something that she would always be frustrated about with him? Yes. Is it fair to say... What's wild is, I, I, I think that person, and I won't, I won't, I won't stick on this too long, but this person that's so mad, I'm pretty sure it's the live I did where I watched all of Tes Tato's testimony, like his first trial, his proffer, his first trial, his second trial. Like, I think that's the one where the person got so mad at me because I made fun of the drawing. The entire time, I'm like, Tato, this man is telling the truth. This man is credible. He's better than the Adelsons. Like, I like, and then she just got so mad that I <laughs> made fun of that picture, but I'm sorry, that fucking picture, man. She goes on to say, she's commented this on my videos and even on Judy. She's like, in Tato's older days, he would have put a hit out on you. And I'm like, relax, lady. That, Catherine, relax. She's not one that takes, out, takes handouts for anyone. Correct. She works really hard, right? Absolutely. Right. Now, around July of 2014, we're going to use the date that you found out that you got pregnant. Yes. Because that's a day that you remember, right? Um, in your opinion, was Catherine acting strange around this time? No, ma'am. Nothing, and you know her. Yes. You've known her since you guys went to school together. Yes. There was nothing unusual about her behavior. No. Did she seem nervous? No. Did she act weird? No. Nothing that st stuck out in your mind? Nothing. Okay. Now, the Lexus that we talked about. Yes. You said that, now you remember there was a time that she was driving the Mazda, right? Yes. She didn't have the Mazda and the Lexus at the same time. No. All right. So the Mazda is not, wasn't doing too great, right? No. Isn't, isn't it true that that Ma Mazda got into a car accident? Yes. Catherine was in that car. Catherine McBannell was in that car accident. She was. Was this around the time of the Pacquiao fight? Yes, it was. Okay. And the car, the Mazda, couldn't be driven anymore because of the accident? Yes. Is that around the time that Charlie Lent, uh, allowed her to use the Lexus? Yes. Okay. Now, you had been in the Lexus, right? Yes. All right. And you had described it as very well kept. Yes. Did you know it was a 2001 Lexus? I did not know the year. Okay. Did you know it had 150,000 miles on it? I did not. Now, even though it was in pristine <coughs> condition, 
it kept breaking down, right? Yes. Okay. And to your knowledge, or do you have any knowledge of whenever it would get fixed? Catherine McBano would pay for it, right? Yes. Or you don't know? I don't know. Okay. Now, around the time that, I would say break up, but was there ever a event or anything that Catherine McBano came to you and said, oh my God, I'm done with Charlie? They were on and off. It wasn't anything serious. So is it fair? It could have been a situation where, I mean, you, you let me know because you were there, okay? You don't remember a specific incident of him breaking up with her? No. Okay. But they remained friends. Isn't that true? Yes. They continued talking all the way up until Sigfredo was arrested, right? Yes. In fact, when you guys worked together at Optima Realty, mm -hmm. you guys shared office space together, correct? We did. Weren't you right beside each other? Literally right next to each other. Okay. And you would know that Charlie would still call her. Yes. But they would talk as friends still. Correct. Now, going back to Mr. Garcia, how did Catherine feel? I mean, it, Sigfredo did not like Charlie. Sigfredo Garcia did not like Charlie Adelson, did he? No. Okay. He didn't make that a secret, right? No. And was Catherine aware of this? Yes. Did, Kath, did Catherine McDaniel, to your knowledge, try to keep them apart? Yes. She didn't want Sigfredo Garcia knowing what she was doing with Charlie Adelson. Correct. And if you're saying so. She didn't want them to know, right? Yes. Okay. And she didn't want, um, well, did, Sig, did Charlie know about Sigfredo, if you know? Did he know that he was in the picture? He yeah. knew he was the father of her child, yes. Okay. To your knowledge, have they ever come into contact with each other? Not that I've seen, no. Not that you've seen for yourself? Correct. But he knew that Catherine was seeing someone else, Sigfredo Garcia? Yes, he did. Okay. And this wasn't a situation where they would all hang out together? Absolutely not. Okay. Now, I want to talk about a statement that the state elicited on direct examination. We talked about that statement that Catherine made to you when she called about an accident. So again, Yindra is just like Jeff, is just like Tato, and is unlike Wendy and Charlie in that she's telling the truth. So she's not going to be tripped up. Like she's confident. She answers what she knows. She doesn't add additional details. Like she's just a great witness. Remember that? Yes. Now, the state termed it as an accident, but that's not what you said, right? Excuse me? The state said that Katie said to you, Charlie says that he's been in an accident, the brother-in-law in, in yes. Tallahassee, right? Yes. But that's not what Katie said. Isn't it true that she said that Charlie said to you, his brother-in-law has been in a car accident and he needs to go to Tallahassee? don't recall. I recall accident, but I don't recall if I said if it was a car accident, but it's possible. Would looking at your deposition refresh yes, your recollection? absolutely. Okay, I'm referring court and counsel to page 96 of the deposition. Oh, thank you. Read right here. Yes, ma'am. What did she say to you? Car accident. Okay. Now, this is what she is telling you that Charlie told her. Correct. Okay. You don't remember exactly what day this was? No. Could have been July 19th? Could have been. 20th? Yes. 21st? You don't know? No. But you, the thing that you remember is her saying that Charlie said his brother got into a car accident. His brother-in-law, yes. And that that is what he told her? Yes. Now, when she is telling you this, mm -hmm. anything weird on her voice or is it does it sound like she was concerned yeah she was concerned yes okay and she was asking to go for you to watch the kids so she could see him before he went to Tallahassee yes okay she never went to Tallahassee no not she that didn't I'm worried. mention anyone's name like Dan Markell no Wendy Adelson no none of that no okay. now the other thing that we were talking about was her working, well, actually, let's go back to the clubs, okay? okay? Because you actually worked in the clubs. Yes. 
How'd you get paid? Cash. All right. Explain to the jury what a good night at a club or the club that you worked with with Catherine in South Florida, a good night, how much you gonna make in cash? Four to five hundred dollars a night. What is bottle service? Uh, you serve, you bring out bottles to a group of people that orders bottles. And they pay a ridiculous amount for like one bottle, right? Yes. All right. But you guys make the tips. We do, and we would make a commission off of the actual bottle, depending on the percentage the club would pay you. Okay, so there's an incentive for you to push the sales of the bottles. Correct. All right. But on a, so if you work Friday, Saturday, Sunday night, you could make close to $2,000, correct? Yeah. Real quick, guys, I'm going to share Yindra's Twitter. Give her a follow. Let her know you're excited about the inter interview. Let her know she's awesome. Um, show her some love, folks, because I always say this. I'm, I'm very grateful for folks that come on the show with me, and I, I'm not like a big – I can't, like, pay these people, and it's, they're, they're just doing that out of the kindness of their heart. So if you could, uh, you know, give her a follow, show her some love, I'd appreciate it. Now, I know you had mentioned that – about the Lexus. Yes. Did Catherine ever tell you that it was a gift? He said that she said that he she he gave it to her, that Charlie gave it to her so that she can, you know, get around. He had she had the kids. Okay. He knew that she needed a vehicle to have her kids. So in the beginning he loaned it to her. Yeah. You don't know if later on she actually paid him so she could keep it. I do not. Now, you had mentioned two different clubs. Yes. Right? And you only worked at one? Correct. And you got paid both check and cash or? No, ma'am. Only cash. cash. Only okay. cash. And is there anything that you would have to report or you basically just take your cash and you go? Cash and go. Okay. Now, you spent a lot of time with Catherine, right? Yes. Okay. Um, you know her pretty well. Around 2014, in your opinion, anything odd happened? No. All right. Um, Guys, the, the Shayna Gardner case, it was a quick appearance, uh, and it's over now. The, the trial wasn't for a little while, so it was an appearance, but it. sorry, I didn't change the title because, anyway, um, that appearance is done. If you want to, if you rewind to the beginning, you can see the appearance with Shayna Gardner. Um, how close was Katie to her mother? Okay. And she lived with her mom for a long time, right? Yes. And as a mother, how is that? How important is being a mother to those two young kids? Okay. When is the last time you saw Catherine? May 2016. Okay. Um, do you know where Catherine's been for the past three years? In jail. Sustained. You wouldn't lie for anyone on the oath, would you? Absolutely not. I have nothing further at this time. Please direct. <coughs> Ms. Kawas asked you about some questions, or sorry, asked you about a report that had been prepared by the FBI or law enforcement in this case, that you review the entirety of that three-page report. Yes. And you believe that there was one mistake in there. Yes. Out of the entire report. Yes. I mean, I actually didn't ask you any questions about that that testimony that you believe was documented incorrectly, did I? No. And because you let us know that that was not accurate. Correct. But everything else was accurate. Yes. Do you recall your address at the time back in like July 2014? I believe it was 10735 Northeast 9th Avenue, Biscayne Park, Florida. I'm sorry, that was long. Can you? <laughs> 10735 Northeast 9th Avenue, Biscayne Park, Florida. Okay, thank you. I want to clarify with you uh, some of the dates. Um, that you were having trouble remembering. Yes. If I were to show you that report prepared by law enforcement that you reviewed and you said everything was in there was accurate except for that one thing. If I showed you in there the 
time period that Catherine Magvanua and Charles Adelson dated, would that help refresh your memory? Yes. May I approach, Judge? You may. For defense counsel, I'm on page one, Stanford, three-page report. And let me know when you're done reading that. Yes. And is that accurate? Okay. Is that refresh your memory? Yes. And is that accurate? Yes. So they started dating toward the end of 2013 and maintained a romantic relationship until January or February 2015. Approximately, yes. The phone call from Ms. Magbanua about um, Charlie's brother-in-law having been in an ac a car accident yes. up in Tallahassee. Um, you received that call from her mm -hmm. the day after she asked you to watch, asked you and not Garcia to watch her children the previous day. Yes. And you kept the kids all night and then you got the phone call about the car accident. Yes. And you later found out that car accident was the murder. Yes. few questions about employment. You talked about how much money you can make in a night. Ms. Kawast asked you how much you would make on a good night. Yes. Was every night a good night? No. What was your average night? Uh, sometimes you would make 100 or 200 dollars. A couple hundred bucks. And how many nights a week would you do that? I only worked two nights a week. Do you remember how many nights Ms. McVanwell worked per week? It was about the same. Maybe two nights a week? Yeah. So this is just a couple hundred dollars here and there? Yes. Unless you had a really good night. Yes. And you weren't, y'all weren't always paid in cash, were you? Yes, we were. Okay. What about the, you said earlier that she quit working at club, I hope I have this correct, club fate because the checks were bouncing? Yes, but I did not work at club fate, ma'am. Okay. So th when you were saying you were always paid in cash, that was only Hollywood Live in particular? That's correct. You indicated Ms. McVanwell quit Hollywood Live one to two months before you did. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. I'm sorry, the court reporter has to take it down. And you know that you quit before you learned you were pregnant on July 4th, 2014. Yes. Lastly, this Lexus, um, you mentioned that he'd given it to her to use. When you were answering those questions, were you aware that the title was transferred to her name and it actually became her vehicle? No. And after Ms. McVanwell quit at Hollywood Live one to two months before you, no employment until the dermatology office? Yes. No further questions, John? All right, any juror have a question of this witness? All right, okay. We'll get to that, Barbara. So think about this, folks. She has now testified to the prosecution, two defense attorneys, redirect. She's not even done yet for this. This Now the jury has questions. Like, business together. Yes. Did I understand that? Uh, were you receiving a commission there? No. Uh, do you know whether she was receiving a commission? No. She was not or you don't know? No, I don't know. She was an assistant to one of the realtors, but I don't know how she was getting paid. Was, was she in a similar position to you? No, I'm a title insurance agent, so it's two different things. Okay. Um, are you aware of whether Ms. McBanawa was ever romantically involved with Charlie Adelson and Mr. Garcia at the same time? I do not know. You're not aware? I'm not aware. Uh, when you were watching the children overnight, the incident you had referred to, were you aware of whether Mr. Garcia was out of town or not? I was not aware. Any follow up from the state? No, Judge. Follow up from Garcia? Give me one second, Ron. No further questions from Mr. Garcia. 
Tack för det. How often would you watch Catherine's children for her? Rarely. Rarely? Yeah. Okay. And would she watch her kids for you sometimes? Yes. Okay. And it would be fair to say that she'd need you if someone else, you know, like the father of her kids or someone else can't watch them, right? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Do you can step down. Do we need to keep her any further? No. Okay. Might need her further. Mr. Garcia. All right, your excuse. Thanks for being here. You're free to go about your business. Call your next witness. All right, folks. So, did I call it or did I call it? Was she not awesome? Is she not an awesome witness? Tells the truth, doesn't make stuff up. Someone objects, she stops. Like, you could just just tell she was there to tell the truth. And again, this had to, this could not have been easy for her. Her childhood friend is two of them. I mean, more so the Katie, the, the her child's godmother is sitting across from her on trial for murder could get sentenced to the rest of her life and by the way this was again i'm not going to watch her this was her first testimony she had to do it again this was 2019 for three years she had it over her head that in 2022 she had to do it again and then she was subpoenaed for charlie's trial but she never um like last minute they we'll talk about it tonight Last minute, they're like, we don't need you. But she could have had it. I mean, uh, and again, not, and Irene brought up a good point. Not only is this trial, she talks about this on her TikTok, and I'm going to share that uh, tonight and everything. Like, there's the added uh, nerve-wracking part that you're, you're on. We're watching this right now. This is on the internet forever. She was live streamed. She knows people are watching her and that there's a camera right on like i could not handle that like i give her so much credit and uh so yeah tonight at 8 p.m her first interview with me i'm honored that she would do it and i'm excited to talk to her we talk i've talked about it on several trials of witnesses who are just caught in the web she's just a completely innocent person who is now sucked into this because of them so, uh, and again, folks, if you missed it, I would highly recommend the uh, analysis that I did yesterday with Jack from Never a Truer Word. Um, and by the way, folks, if you like that analysis, he's coming back April 21st, 3 p.m. Eastern. That's not this Sunday. It's the Sunday after. We're going to continue watching uh, Wendy's police interview. He's he's going to give me some timestamps and we're going to we're going to watch. We're going to he's to point out the things, the stuff he pointed out yesterday, like and I've watched her uh, interview more times than I would like to admit. And I'm like, holy shit, you're right. He, she does say, oh, my God, so many times. And she says, oh, my God, right before she like says, like puts out like a, a weird statement. So April 21st, 3 p.m. Jack will be back. And by the way. Even when we're done with the police interview, I'd love him to, to have him come on. We have Wendy's testimony we can watch. We have Charlie and Donna's um, recorded calls from jail. Like I'd love to get his um, his uh, insight on all of them. So thank you guys, everyone, for being here. Uh, thank you, Mods, as always. Back tonight, 8 Eastern. Hope you can join us. Yindra Velasquez, the awesome witness we just watched. She's going to be on for her first interview, folks. This is her first interview, exclusive interview with us. 8 Eastern, Yindra Velasquez is going to talk all about it. I have so many questions. I wish I could show you my notes app. I have so many questions. I just hope I can get it. I, I don't uh, miss anything. So love you guys. Thank you so much. We will be back at 8 Eastern. Thank you, Mods, as always. Thank you all. And I'll see you back here. 8 Eastern. I think this will portal. Let me see. I have the portal set up into it. So if you could just get it in the algorithm, hit the like button. Uh, let people know. Let people you'll be here tonight. So thank